To continue with our physical fitness unit, we will uh, now look at the uh, five types of exercise. To begin with isometric, as you see, it's an exercise in which your muscles are tightened for about five to 10 seconds without any movement of the body parts. This is a great activity to do for stretching, and you'll see a lot of pro athletes, you know, they'll, they'll, do, they'll do some of these hurdler stretches or stuff. It's also great to get out the lactic acid out of your muscle tissue. Uh, after a workout. So uh, before or after workout is a good time to use this type of uh, uh, exercise. It does make your uh, blood pressure go up. So uh, if you don't have a good heart or anything like that, these are, these are not good activities for you to do. But if you're, have, you're, you're healthy and have a strong heart, this is great. Isotonic. This is an exercise where there's a contraction of the muscles causing movement and uh, any kind of movement. You see swimming, walking, running, bicycling, sports activities, anything where you're doing all sorts of movement of any kind, uh, jumping rope, uh, jumping jacks, those are all isotonic ex activities. Very good for uh, cardio endurance, aerobic uh, workout. Isokinetic, this is an exercise in which a weight or resistance is moved through a full range of motion. This is the ideal now. This is kinetic force. You have to be pushing something or pulling something. As you see here, they're either using a machine with some resistance on it or free weights of some kind. But there has to be some type of resistance to do this. Uh, if you lift heavier weights and you decide to do that, uh, less reps, you're trying to build up m muscle strength, muscle mass. If you, if you lift lighter weights and more reps, then you're trying to develop muscle endurance. Then we have aerobic activity. This is an exercise that requires a continuous use of oxygen over an extended period of time. Uh, aerobic fitness, as you see down below, is achieved by working out at your target heart rate for 30 minutes, three to five times a week. And we described how to get your target heart rate in unit one. Um, again, you're going to be doing this activity for an extended period of time. We're trying to strengthen your heart muscles so its uh, volume of blood it pumps out each time is greater and that we increase your intercostals and um, exterior costals and your diaphragm so you'll pull in more oxygen into your lungs every time you take a breath. This in turn will cause your heart to beat more slowly and in your resting phase and you'll be able to perform at a higher level longer. Anaerobic, this is an exercise in which the uh, body's demand for oxygen exceeds the supply. The body doesn't take in the oxygen as fast, it suffers, you will suffer from shortness of breath and you will build up lactic acid. As you see here we have football players and sprinters. This is the kind of activity you do if you want to get big and bulky and you know just you're working on muscle strength uh, or speed but uh, again with this activity, you definitely won't keep up with your oxygen needs. Your body won't, and you will therefore give off the uh, the uh, waste product of lactic acid in your muscles. If you don't stretch this out, you'll get sore. So you need to make sure you stretch out after every uh, anaerobic workout. Now let's determine your target heart rate. The first thing we got to determine is what kind of fitness level are you currently in. If you're in bad fitness, we'll use 60%. If you're in high fitness, like an Olympic athlete, we'll use 90%. The next thing is find your resting heart rate. How many beats per minute your heart beats while you're sitting still. Take your pulse while you're sitting still. After 30 seconds, multiply that number by 2 and you'll have your resting heart rate. Then find your maximum heart rate. How fast can you get your heart rate to beat? Try jumping a rope. You can jump a rope for a couple minutes and then check your heart rate, see how fast it is. And then jump again for a couple minutes and check it. And if it goes up, can continue this process until you've actually reached your uh, a speed in which your heart will no longer increase anymore. And that's your maximum heart rate. With determining your target heart rate, then we're going to take that resting heart rate, we're going to subtract it from your maximum heart rate, and here's an example of a maximum heart rate of 180 beats subtracted by 60 is 120. Then we're going to multiply the difference by your percentage of fitness. Are you that 60% slug or are you that 90% Olympic athlete? And here we pick 0.70 for 70%. And then we add step 2, the result of that, to your resting heart rate, and that gives us our target heart rate. Here we see the difference was uh, 84 beats per minute. We added your resting heart rate back to it, 60 beats per minute, and we came up with 144 beats per minute as our target heart rate. If by chance you come up with a decimal of some kind here, just round it up or round it down based on where it is. Training principles. Uh, if you're going to work out, you got to follow some principles to be able to make sure you're doing a good job with your workout. Always warm up. 
a cool down, then use specificity, overload, progression, and frequency. For the principle of warming up, you want to work out three to five minutes of activity here. Uh, you get, get going, get your heart rate up, and then we're going to go ahead and stretch. You know, we might jog in place, do something of this nature, jumping jacks, uh, might do a quick quick uh, run someplace, but we're not going to do anything crazy. We're going to do something just for a little bit to get the heart rate up, then stretch, make sure we get um, all the motion to joints, get the joints to make sure they have synovial fluid placed in them so we decrease the uh, chances of you getting hurt. Principle of cooling down after your workout, we're going to we're going to try to do something where we're slowly, gradually uh, bringing our heart rate down. Maybe a light jog of some kind, maybe a fast walk with our hands over our head to ensure we're continuing to get oxygen in. Then we're going to stretch. With that stretch, your heart rate's going to slow down. We're going to the the pool blood in your legs going to slowly return back into your uh, torso. We're going to get your body temperature to cool down a little bit, and we're going to remove all that lactic acid when we stretch. You know, all those muscle groups again. The principle of specificity basically says you should choose an activity that you desire, the desired benefit that you want to get from that activity. If you're trying to gain speed, don't do something that's endurance. You know, if you want to get faster, you wouldn't run a mile. You'd run, you know, 50, 40s, 100 yard dashes. Work the specific muscle group that you're trying to gain uh, a benefit for and know whether or not you're trying to gain speed, bulk, endurance. The principle of overload, increase the body's capacity to do more work than usual. Make sure you build gradually though when you do this. You can never get better if you don't do a little bit more. Every day we're not putting five pounds of uh, weight on our bench because that wouldn't be very intelligent. Uh, we just gradually increase what we do and make sure that like we have here, if you're gonna lift weights, you have a spotter to help you. Principal progression, gradually increase the duration and the intensity of your exercise. Never increase your resistance distance and time without working up to it gradually. You should keep some type of workout chart that lets you know this. Wait till you become very comfortable with something, then increase it again. Uh, we don't. It's not a race to see how much we can lift. It's, it's a race to uh, improve, to get stronger, but we don't have to be there overnight. Okay, we don't want to cause you to have any injury, so keep that in mind when you're doing activities. Principle of frequency, how often are you going to engage in your exercise program? For something like cardiovascular fitness, you must exercise about three times a week just to maintain where you're at, and five times a week to get any kind of improvement. So uh, keep this in mind with whatever it is you're going to be trying to accomplish.